Humanity holds a curious and contradictory title. We are, undoubtedly, the fastest species to have ever walked the Earth. Over centuries of technological evolution, we have built machines that defy gravity, break the sound barrier, and tear through the skies with a controlled fury. However, when we turn our eyes to the silent abyss of space, reality hits us with a humiliating brutality. On a cosmic scale, we are statues. We barely move. To understand this contradiction, we need to look at the absolute peak of our current engineering, the Parker Solar Probe. This probe is not just a technological feat. It is a monster of speed that is, at this very moment, diving into the solar corona, braving infernal temperatures. It shattered all previous records by reaching an insane 724,000 kilometers per hour. To put that into a perspective that makes sense in our daily lives, imagine leaving Times Square in New York and arriving at the Hollywood sign in California in just 20 seconds. It is a speed that defies our biological intuition. It feels like the final triumph of engineering, the pinnacle of what we are capable of creating. But the universe operates on a scale so vast and indifferent that even these colossal numbers become a bad joke. The hard truth we need to swallow is that this record-breaking speed represents only 0.05% of the speed of light. In the great cosmic racetrack, where distances are measured in the years that light takes to travel, we can barely get the car out of the garage. And here lies the existential problem that keeps astrophysicists awake at night. We are, technically, trapped. If we maintained the Parker Solar Probe's top speed constantly, something that is already incredibly difficult, a trip to our nearest stellar neighbor, Proxima Centauri, would take over 6,000 years to complete. Think about what 6,000 years means. Entire empires are born, flourish, conquer the world, and disappear into the dust of history in that span of time. Sending a human crew under these conditions isn't an exploration mission. It is a sentence to oblivion. We are confined to our solar system by the invisible chains of distance. Unless we manage to break the rules. What if I told you there is a loophole in physics? A real theory, seriously discussed in laboratories, that would allow traveling faster than light without violating Einstein's laws? We will get there soon, but to understand how this cosmic cheat works, we first need to value the slow steps that brought us here. Our speed odyssey didn't start with noble intentions, but explosively in 1944. That year, the German De 5 e 2 rocket went down in history as the first man-made object to touch the edge of space. It was a technology born of the desperation of war, as revolutionary in its engineering as it was controversial in its purpose. But that metal cylinder proved one fundamental thing. We could escape the clutches of Earth's gravity. Fast forwarding a few decades, we arrive at the 1970s, the golden age of great missions, when we launched the Voyager probes. These robotic travelers are true icons of our persistence, tearing through the void at over 60,000 kilometers per hour. They gave us the grand tour of the solar system, revealing the storms of Jupiter and the rings of Saturn. But space is merciless. Even at that speed, the Voyagers took more than 40 years just to cross the heliopause, the boundary of our solar backyard. They remain out there, carrying golden records with sounds from Earth, alone in the interstellar darkness, sending increasingly faint radio signals. Our curiosity, however, is insatiable. In 2006, the New Horizons mission set off to hunt down Pluto in the frozen reaches of our neighborhood. After a solitary decade-long journey, it transformed a blurry dot of light into a complex world of ice mountains. And of course, the evolution of Martian rovers is living proof of our progress. We went from the small sojourner carts to mobile laboratories like Curiosity and Perseverance. Perseverance marks a new era. It isn't just faster, it is smarter, using autonomy to search for signs of ancient life in the red rocks. But despite all these successes, the question echoes. Will we be satisfied exploring only our backyard forever? 
there is an audacious plan to go further. It is called Breakthrough Starshot. The proposal looks like something out of a fiction book, but it is based on solid physics. The idea is not to build gigantic ships, but to send a fleet of nanocraft, spacecraft the size of a chip, attached to extremely thin solar sails. These sails would be pushed not by wind, but by giant laser beams fired from Earth. Light pressure would accelerate the nanocraft to 20% of the speed of light in minutes. This would change the game. The impossible 6,000-year trip to Proxima Centauri would drop to just 20 years. For the first time, it would be possible to launch a mission and be alive to see the results, with a launch scheduled for the 2030s. But let's be honest. Sending chips is one thing. Sending human beings, with all our biological frailties, is a completely different challenge. Can we go faster and transport people? The answer might not lie in bigger chemical engines, but in creating better digital brains. This is where artificial intelligence steps in to rewrite the rules. Many associate AI only with virtual assistants, but its potential for space exploration is revolutionary. AI is moving from being a passive tool to becoming the active pilot of cosmic expansion. Today, algorithms already process mountains of astronomical data that humans would take centuries to analyze, discovering exoplanets and optimizing trajectories to save fuel. But the real revolution lies in autonomy. Space is vast and communication is slow. A radio signal takes minutes or hours to travel. In an emergency, you cannot wait for mission control in Houston. The Perseverance rover already uses AI to see the terrain and decide routes on its own. Project that into the future. Interstellar ships piloted 100% by AI systems. Imagine a system capable of monitoring astronaut health, managing oxygen and energy with mathematical perfection, and reacting to catastrophic failures in milliseconds, saving the crew before they even realize the danger. This leads us to fascinating scenarios, like biomimetic spacecraft designed by AI that adapt to the environment, changing shape or self-repairing like living skin. It is like having a space navigator with superpowers. But here I want to pause and ask you a serious question. If we had this capability today, would you have the courage to enter a hibernation pod for an interstellar trip? Knowing that, for years, your life would be entirely in the hands of an artificial intelligence without any human pilot awake? Would you trust your existence to an algorithm? Comment yes or no down below. I want to know how far your trust in the machine goes. That trust will be necessary because AI won't just be flying. It will help us build engines that haven't even left the drawing board yet. It is our co-pilot in the development of theoretical systems like the legendary warp drive. So. Buckle up. With AI in command, we are speeding toward the final frontier. To understand how to turn fiction into reality, we go back to 1994, when physicist Miguel Alcubierre proposed the Alcubierre drive, or warp drive. The idea is brilliant. Instead of pushing the ship through space, which requires infinite energy to reach the speed of light, the proposal is to move space around the ship. Think of a surfer. He doesn't swim faster than the wave. He lets the wave carry him. The ship would be inside a bubble of space-time that contracts space in front and expands it behind. Inside the bubble, the ship would be stationary. The astronauts wouldn't feel any acceleration, but the bubble would be traveling faster than light. This does not violate relativity because the law says nothing travels in space faster than light, but space itself has no speed limit. To visualize this, take a piece of paper and draw two distant points. The fastest way to connect them isn't to draw a line, it is to fold the paper until the points touch. The Alcubierre drive does exactly that. It bends the geometry of the universe to create a shortcut. It seems like the perfect solution. We could visit other suns and be back for dinner. But there is a monumental obstacle, the price tag. To turn on this cosmic treadmill, we need negative energy. Do not confuse this with negativity. In physics, negative energy is an exotic property of the quantum vacuum, the opposite of positive energy, mass. Think of positive energy as money in the bank 
and negative energy as debt. The problem is the quantity. Initial calculations said we would need energy equivalent to the mass of the entire planet Jupiter to create a warp bubble. Impossible. But this is where artificial intelligence saves the day again. Having an AI working on these problems is like having a supercomputer testing trillions of geometric possibilities per second. And we already have results. In 2021, computer-assisted studies indicated that by changing the shape of the bubble, we might not need a planet's worth of energy. Perhaps we can make it work with much smaller amounts, maybe even with conventional matter. It is like discovering that your car, which needed an ocean of fuel, now runs on a powerful battery. This changes everything. The warp drive stops being fantasy and becomes an engineering problem. We aren't going to Alpha Centauri tomorrow, but the barrier of the impossible is cracking. We are leaving the era of brute force chemical rockets for the era of intelligence and reality manipulation. Perhaps our generation will be the first to see a real photo of a habitable exoplanet. Maybe we will see the rise of two suns on an alien world, or the grandeur of a nebula seen from the window. The universe is vast and lonely, designed to isolate us. But the human spirit wasn't made to stay put. We were made to cross the horizon, with artificial intelligence analyzing data, protecting lives, and unraveling physics, the sky has stopped being the limit. It is just the beginning. And now, the ball is in your court. If you had a ship with a warp drive right now, where would you go? What would be your first stop in the universe? A black hole? A planet with life? Leave your answer in the comments. If this trip blew your mind, leave a like, subscribe, and share with other explorers. Let's keep this conversation about the future going. Until then, keep looking up at the stars.